G'day. And I feel fine because pessimists are never surprised. Thank you for joining me for your end of the world programming here on Star Stuff. Uh, I've been taking some images outside because it's been lovely and clear. The moon is gone, planes aren't flying. It's great. Today I'm going to show you my two camera trick. I've spoken about this many times, but I haven't made a video explicitly about this trick. I use a mono camera and a color camera, and that means I don't have to use four channels to do H, A, R, G, and B, or the three channels for the Hubble Palette Narrowband. Uh, it's basically just two runs. You do one run of the hydrogen alpha, or just broadband mono, and one run of the one shot color. Combine them together, and I'll be using my new QHY 24-7C for this. So I'll show you how it all works, show you a great image at the end of it. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. Grab yourself a pack of three ply and buckle up. There's a comet. A naked eye comet is on the way. Now, this is gonna be mostly visible from the Northern Hemisphere, but depending on how bright it is, this could be visible from the Southern Hemisphere as well. Uh, it's headed towards the sun right now from Ursa Major. It was the last comet discovered in 2019. C 2019 Y4 Atlas. Uh, I guarantee the news is dominated with virus related stuff right now but there will be a mention of this as it comes closer to April, May, and people can see this in the sky. At least that's what we think is gonna happen based on this light curve and the fact that it's outbursting so rapidly right now, and we've still got some ways to go yet before it grazes the sun. As it gets closer to the sun, we'll see the ice tail and the ion tail, uh, but this is exciting because we haven't seen a comet for a while. Northern Hemisphere hasn't seen a comet for a while, and we'd be getting all the great comets down here, but this time it's your turn. So keep your eye on Comet Atlas. You heard it here first. You like this merch? It's not merch, it's just something I designed. I'll leave a link below if you want to buy one. Um, I don't have permission from anybody to do this. If you're on Team F2, grab one and rub it in your friends' faces. I saw uh, Astro Backyard's video and saw he's got rabbits in his backyard. Uh, you know what we got in our backyard? Mmm, things get really bad. Got some mushrooms. Oh, this is something else we have in our backyard. Bush turkeys. My kids like to feed them, so they hang around here a lot. But if things get real bad, I'm gonna eat you, buddy. Don't worry, I won't eat you. Unless it gets really bad. For the Rasa owners out there, if you want nice diffraction spikes, put your cables at 90 degrees to each other and use painter's tape because painter's tape doesn't leave a sticky residue. Okay, so here's some of the data I got last night, but look, this is what happens if you don't take darks of the right exposure or temperature, but really exposure length. I've got these massive colorful blobs where a uh, hot pixel has been dragged across my image uh, along with the drift because I'm not polar aligned properly. And normally this would come out with darks, but the dark was wrong. So look, we all do this sometimes. <laughs> I'm just using the content aware uh, subtraction just to remove those. But that aside, can I just take a second to acknowledge just how bananas this color data is. I haven't stretched the saturation or anything yet, but for a one shot color camera on a really faint target, that is just beautiful, but the mono version of this is something else. I mean, check that out. Just the, <laughs> the depth of the hydrogen is unbelievable. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna get the color in that. I want the quality of the mono and the depth of the mono with the color that I got from the one shot color camera. So the first step is to register that image using the star registration tool, uh, which will line up the framing and the stars perfectly to what my color image is because the color image is cropped in a fair bit so uh, we've lost a bit of that whole scene and we've lost this side as well uh, which is unfortunate so this will be cropped in a fair bit now after some careful cropping I've managed to keep a little bit of that red nebula on the side there and we want to lay our color over the top so here's my color layer this is just normal blending and it's pretty cool like it's a cool shot but I want to get that dust in there a little bit more as well 
Um, so, so I'm going to change the blend mode up here from normal to color. And you see what that does is it lays everything over nicely. Now we've got all of that dust back. It's like a transparency, you see. Think about the color layer as like cellophane going over the top of your mono image. So if I move it, you see all that colors come away from the detail. There is our blue blob, but you see the, the red stars and the blue blob, um, they're all just shades of color. There's no actual detail in that layer at all. So like cellophane, I'm just popping the layer over the top. This is why I'm pumping out images. It's just so fast. <laughs> I keep stressing how easy it is to do this. Uh, so if you're strapped for time like I am, and it's particularly good if you've got a fast telescope, this is a super quick way for getting fast color images. Just stunning. Good trick, right? But you know what? Putting that Raster 11 back on and using the one-shot color camera, the new QHY 24-7C that I got, it's pretty good on its own. And even though it doesn't have the depth that the uh, the mono wide field on the Raster 8 has, I gotta say I like this one better. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this small piece of advice. Let me know if you employ the two camera trick at all. Stay safe, star stuffers. Try not to touch your face or anybody else's. Wash your hands and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>